What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna discuss The Gifted Season 1, episode titled Boxed In, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Gifted this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. So in this week's episode of The Gifted, there was a lot of moving parts. So as I review this, excuse me if I jump around quite a bit trying to put everything together, because it really was just a multi-layered episode. So one of the big things this week was we got a lot of backstory on the Sentinel Services' Jace Turner, uh, finally seeing what happened to his family on July 15th. So we find out the significance of July 15th. It was a mutant equality march in Jace's city where he was a police officer at the time. His wife and his daughter were there with him. The uh, march got out of hand, violence ensued, and his daughter ended up getting killed on the playground they were at in the park, uh, which is why he ends up joining Sentinel Services and he's doing what he's doing now in regards to the Mutant Underground and all the stuff that we've seen throughout the season. So really they were just trying to humanize him a bit more in this episode so we could understand why he's doing what he's doing and why he feels the way he feels about these characters and the mutants on the series. And in some regards, I could understand why he's doing what he's doing, but at the same time, I'm the kind of person where I don't like to generalize and classify people all into one big melting pot based on the actions of just a handful. So for me, going into this episode, I couldn't really identify with what he was doing in that regard. Although when it comes to his family and that situation, I can understand why he's so upset in the first place. And the most heartbreaking thing about this week's episode was he had to relive the loss of his daughter all over again because when he was captured by the mutant underground who was trying to get information from him about their members who had been captured by Sentinel Services, Dreamer comes in, she uses her abilities on him, and he forgets that his daughter has passed away. So at the end of the episode, when he goes to see his wife, he has to relive that moment all over again. And I have to say, even for an episode of television, that was really hard for me to watch. It was really difficult. And I think they conveyed that emotion really well because they, they made that important in this episode based on what happened with him and the mutants, as well as us as viewers being able to identify with him and the loss of his child. So I think that was a great part of the episode, but it was also heartbreaking. So they definitely went full circle with him. And I think this is gonna re-energize him in the Sentinel services to want to do even more than he's already done. So it's like the mutants basically shot themselves in the foot here because they went in with one plan and they just made it harder for themselves. And another really big part of this episode was Reed Strucker, who's been reunited with his family back at the Mutant Underground, has to prove to Fade that he actually is on their side. Because as you remember, a couple episodes ago, he tried to talk to Fade and get him to bring him into the Mutant Underground while he had a tracker on him. And Fade knows it, so that's all brought to light. So Reed feels compelled outside of his family with Caitlin and his kids to do something to prove to the Mutant Underground that he is in fact loyal to them. And of course, there's a lot of aggression from Fade towards Reed as he's trying to find a way to win the trust of the Mutant Underground. What can he do to prove that he is loyal to them? He actually jumps into the room where Sage is watching all the TVs and monitoring all the radios and he says, hey, I know all their call signs. I know their protocols. Give me a map. Oh, it looks like they're coming towards us. They're going to find us at the way station. They're closing in on us which I thought was an interesting thing, but that wasn't enough. So he's like, I have to do something else. So we have this team up between Fade and Reed where he actually goes out, puts his face on the camera and basically pulls the Sentinel services away from the way station, thus proving his loyalty to the rest of the mutant underground, at least for the time being. Um, again, I thought this was a great part of the episode. This episode was really deep. It was a lot of layered parts. So that's why we're jumping through it pretty quick. Uh, let's talk about the Caitlyn stuff. So of course, Reed isn't the only one feeling the weight of what he did. His wife, Caitlyn, and his two kids are also sort of wrapped up in it. And everybody in the Mutant Underground is looking at them like, hey, you know, can we trust you? Can we not trust you? We can't believe that your father, your husband would actually do this. We risked our lives for him. And now we find out that he was trying to, you know, basically lead Sentinel services to us. So Trader who was hurt last episode uh, at, during the uh, the fight when they were trying to break out Polaris and Reed uh, is losing a lot of blood and so uh, they have to figure a way to save him. And so Caitlin's doing everything she can in this scene with the kids. The kids and Caitlin are kind of contained to this one scene throughout the whole episode. It was really cool to see Caitlin contributing to the Mutant Underground without having any powers. She's a very important character because she's a healer, basically. She is their medic. We see that, uh, you know, Andy is pitching in by donating blood. We see that Lauren is using her powers to help and help her mother with the stitching and, and just everything. So it was great to see these contributions going on from these characters outside of going out in the field and doing big things. It was a very small moment, but it meant so much. And it looks like between this and what Reed did, they kind of won over the trust 
of the mutant underground. Another part of this episode was the Polaris eclipse moments with Jace, where they were trying to escape from Sentinel services and we get to see the extent of their powers together. It was great. Polaris's powers are done so well on the show and her team up with uh, Eclipse, you know, holding the mirror. There's a point where they're holding a mirror out the window with her powers and he uses his powers to bounce his uh, energy beams off of the mirror and hits one of the Sentinel drones. Um, so yeah, there was just a lot of cool elements. But what one of the biggest parts of their scenes together was when they have Jace and they've got him, you know, captured and locked up, we get to see just how ruthless Polaris is compared to Eclipse. She definitely has a streak of Magneto in her. You can tell because she feels no remorse for anything that has happened to anybody else. And she pulls him to the side and she's like, look, I understand that you feel bad for him. I, I know you feel sorry for everything that's happened, but people that we know are being locked up. People that we know are being detained. They're being killed. We are dying and we need to do something about it. So this is why they have that moment together. And it kind of shows the uh, dichotomy of these two characters and how their way of dealing with things is completely different. So I predict that what happens in the remainder of the season is going to have a lot to do with these two characters bumping heads because we saw that Eclipse was kind of sort of co-lead with Thunderbird, but now that Polaris is back, she's going to start calling the shots, and I think things are going to get a lot more ruthless uh, compared to what we've seen so far. We haven't seen nothing yet, is basically what I'm saying. And things finally come to a head between Blink and Dreamer. Throughout the episode, you see Blink listening in on some of the conversations that are going on between Dreamer and other characters who point out what her powers actually do. She can take memories away. She can plant false memories. She can create brand new memories for people. I mean, she can do so many things with her powers. Um, she can even basically read people's minds, it looks like. So it's, it's very interesting how her powers work. But anyway, so Blink gets the gist of it and she confronts Dreamer about it and this is one of the parts of the episode that I didn't like simply because I felt like Thunderbird also played a part in this as well I mean yes he didn't tell Dreamer to do it but he did not tell Blink about it as well so I have a feeling we're not done with this but Blink basically tells Dreamer leave me alone I don't want you to have anything to do with me um, you know, again, this is going to cause major tension and I would not be surprised if Blink brings this up to Thunderbird in another episode before the end of the season. I just find it really weird that this would be the end of it. So I can't wait to see where we go with this. I also want to take a moment to point out, we got a really good look at Shatter this week and I love the way he looks on the show. This is so comic booky. <laughs> you would think that I would find this very cheesy because it does look I don't know. It looks like it could go wrong very easily, but I actually like it on the show. I can't wait to see more of him. He was very involved with some of the stuff that happened this week. Not as much as I'd like to see, but I think he's going to play a big part uh, in the season when we get to the finale because we're, we're getting close there. We're a little over halfway through. So overall, I thought this was a pretty solid episode of The Gifted. It wasn't as exciting as some of the other episodes. There wasn't too much wrong with it. There was times where the pacing was a bit off. The stuff between Blink and Dreamer could have been a bit more, I don't know, it felt like it led up to it and then it kind of fizzled out. I was kind of hoping that Thunderbird, Thunderbird would be roped into it a little bit, but they didn't bring him up. So I'm hoping they bring him up in another episode moving forward. Um, yeah, it was just so much going on in this episode so much there were some scenes that I absolutely adored but there was a lot of stuff where it felt like it was drudging through so compared to previous episodes I don't think this one was as strong but I know that they had to they had to like move some of these story plots along so this episode was necessary it just so it just accumulated all into one episode uh so I'm gonna give this week's episode a 7.5 out of 10 I don't think it was bad I think it was a it was a solid episode there wasn't much else they could have done I think everybody acted really well um but there just wasn't as much as excitement as I would like to see yes we had some cool scenes with Polaris and Eclipse and uh we had some moments with some other characters but they did a really weird job of splitting people up and so everything felt like it was disjointed and all over the place but they did the best with what they what they had so i have to give them props for that but i'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10 which isn't a bad score again i thought it was a decent episode uh anyway but what did you guys think about this episode of the gifted box 10 did you guys enjoy it did you love it did you hate it what how did you feel about it what do you think we're gonna see between polaris and eclipse moving forward is there gonna be a budding of heads because i feel like that's where it's gonna go do you think that love triangle between dreamer blink and thunderbird that imaginary love triangle is gonna go any further 
further or do you think we're done with it? We're, we're, it's basically over with. Um, and what do you think about Jace? Do you think he's invigorated? He's been reignited to go out and hunt down the mutant underground because I feel like that's what's going to happen. I think that they what they did backfired on them. Uh, all that and more, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, guys, have a great day and I will catch you later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Ericverse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.